All right, it seems like my microphone is finally working again. I already sound lazily, and I don't want to try and do this again, so we're just going to start from here. Hello, everyone. My name is Yostrix. Today, I'm introducing my commander deck and Mordu backgrounds. Though not explicitly obvious or anything from the thumbnail, Mordu backgrounds is helmed by the pairing of Silvar, Devourer of the Free, and Trend Champion of Freedom. Silvar is a 4-2 legendary creature cut Nightmare for 3 black and a red that has 3 abilities. Partner with Trin, Menace, and Sacrifice a Human, put a plus one plus one counter on Silvar, and it gains indestructible on turn of turn. To go to its partner, we have Trin. Trin is a 3-3 legendary creature human soldier with two abilities. Partner with Silvar, and at the beginning of your end step, if you attack with a creature this turn, create a 1-1 one -one human soldier. This partner pairing looks rather straightforward. Attack with Silvar, make a human token to fuel Silvar, in which case that isn't wrong. But we're going to make them both a little bit more threatening with the use of backgrounds. What are backgrounds? Backgrounds are legendary enchantments that give your commander more abilities. As an additional challenge for this commander theme, I wanted to use only legendary creatures, then their legendaries matter precon released. Great timing on my part. Now let's look at the lands. Blood Crypt, Ejango, Seed of the Empire, Fabled Passage, Haunted Ridge, Nomad Outpost, Reflecting Pool, Shattered Sanctum, Takanuma, Abandoned Mire, Vault of the Archangel, 8 Mountains, 8 Plains, and 9 Swamps. For probably the biggest chunk that matters, backgrounds and enchantments. Agent of the Iron Throne, works with Arcra tokens and creatures to ping opponents possibly twice of the commanders out. Agent of Shadow Thieves, a way to attack the highest life total while keeping our commanders protected given they don't mark them before combat. Criminal Pass, with low recursion in our deck, this buffs our commanders over time. Cultists of the Absolute, one of the 50-50 enchantments that buffs our commanders, but if we can't produce tokens, it becomes a downside very quickly. Haunted One, the coolest of the black backgrounds, it buffs those with the same type when our commanders tap. We mainly want this with Trin. Anointed Procession, a quick sneak in, doubles our tokens because this has to become a very expensive list after a couple weeks, so why not make it worse? Flaming Fist, a simple double strike aura for commanders. Folk Hero, draws us a card when we play a card that matches our commander's types. Inspiring Leader, buffs our tokens so they could also be blockers. Noble Heritage, a political tool that helps us buff our commanders too. Veteran Soldier, a way to make tokens when attacking the largest life total. Dragon Cultist makes a 4-4 dragon if we dealt 5 or more damage to an opponent this turn. Guild Artisan makes us 2 treasures when we attack the highest life total. Passionate Archaeologist, when we cast a card from Exile, we deal 2 times CMC damage, so that's pretty damn good. Popular Entertainer, a way to goad creatures when we deal combat damage, which can be a little bit difficult sometimes. And Tavern Brawler, Exile is a card for 1 extra card in hand and buffs the power of our commander by plus X plus 0. Considering the number of legendary backgrounds in this deck, it seems like it's a legendary tribal deck in a way, as I stated earlier, so I picked out a whole bunch of legendary creatures to fit our commander tribal. Starting with Adeline Resplendent Cathar, makes tokens a sacrifice as we attack or become 5 fives with Inspiring Leader. Adriana, Captain of the Guard, gives all of our creatures melee to buff them even more than necessary. Baloth, Baritol Entertainer, be able to goad creatures without targeting them and also makes treasures when they die. Commander, Liara Porter, exiles cards and makes them cheaper to cast in the process. Balthus, Shadow Cat Familiar, gives our commander some evasion and death touch. Elden of the Third Path, a weight of recursion in a future commander deck tech. Lissa, Fang of Silver Quill, a way to make creatures off of the counters lost on those that have died. General Enforcer, the only non-legendary creature in this deck that gives indestructible to every other creature here. Our version of Lightning Greaves in this deck. General Kundro Draineth, with a human tribal deck, it exiles annoying recurring cards and repeatable creature removal. Ken Arcanum Weaver, a stupidly obvious include that I didn't think up till I made this script. Jaren Corrupt Bishop, another token generator and possible 6-6 six -six demon. Jeriana Kundro, a token generator and tribal buff. Camber the Plunderer, a way to cycle our cards given opponents creatures end up dying. Karazakar, the Eye Tyrant, a way to goad creatures and draw cards. Kedis, Emberclaw Familiar, good to deal damage in 4 player games. Kellis, Sunmain Familiar, a small buff to our commanders when they attack. Lazel, Blandkin's Champion, a way to slowly accrue stupid amounts of value. Lorene, the Diversion, a good way to goad creatures once more and an outlet for extra artifacts or creatures. Massacre Girl, a board wipe on a creature. Radadrabic of Urborg, a way to repeat our legendary creatures in the form of tokens, paired well with Anointed Procession. Serval, Deathbringer, we should be sacrificing stuff each turn, but our opponents hopefully won't be. Shadow Heart, Death, Justicar, card draw but make it a sacrifice. Shannon, Sleeper Scourge, a commander I was excited for and fits the stack very well, draws cards and gives menace to all legendaries on our board. Tesa Karlov, a death trigger doubler that gives tokens lifelink and death touch. Felis, Reverend Medium, make, make a lot of tokens, so we need more. Yoshimaru, ever faithful, suddenly price spiked, shocking, but gets a plus one plus one counter whenever a legendary permanent enters our board. Time for our colorless enchantments, artifacts. Arcane Signet, Mana Rock, Ashnod's Altar, Sacrifice Outlet, Excess Tokens. Bellwar Stone, Mana Rock, Heirloom Blade, finds more humans when one dies, preferably a token. Herald Horn, makes our creatures cheaper, possibly more card draw. Mindstone, Mana Rock, Skull Clamp, card draw for small tokens, and Soul Ring, Mana Rock. 
Sticking with slow spells first, sorceries. Haunting Voyage, a recursion spell for creature types. Guess what we're picking? Jessica's Will, a made of ramp and exile cards, OP as hell. Primville's Glorious Rebirth, returns all legendary permanents from your graveyard. Re read the bones, scry two, draw two, lose two. Ruinous Ultimatum, destroys everything that's not ours. Urza's Ruinous Blast, destroys everything that isn't a legendary permanent. And Victimize, sack two tokens to bring back an important creature. Now for the fastest stuff in our deck, Instance. Boros Charm, flexible for combat protection and final damage. Rakdos Charm, so graveyard removal, artifact removal, and mass damage if we have a small board and they don't. Return to Dust, exile up to ar two artifacts or enchantments. Swords to Plowshares, exile a problematic creature and they gain a bit of life off of its power. Svots Will, make everyone sack their biggest stuff then make trolls based on the biggest. Terminate, destroy target creature. And Unbreakable Formation, keep your creatures alive when a board wipe hits, or do so before an attack to buff your creatures and make it so they don't tap when they attack. For its overall power level, I would say it's about a 7 out of 10. And that's the video. I know it was kind of late, I've been busy with life and trying to test and make this deck work properly. I think I'm happy with it for now. I am kind of stuffed up in the nose, I haven't went for my allergies to pass, but it just didn't. And originally this was supposed to be a budget brew, it still could be with some choice excludes, but that's up to you. So, I'll see you guys next month. Goodbye. Primble's Gl- Gort. Primble-